Hello everybody. So today we're going to be dealing with a heat exchanger example problem. Now we've already gone over heat exchangers, but this is just going to teach us how or show us how to um, deal with an example problem applying the concept, concepts that we've learned. Now it's going to be written in the description, but I have a problem that says an air stream is used to boil a water stream in a steady flow insulated heat exchanger. The air enters this exchanger at 100 kilopascals and 327 degrees Celsius and leaves at 100 kilopascals and 127 degrees Celsius. The water enters as a saturated liquid at 300 kilopascals and leaves as a saturated vapor at 300 kilopascals. What is the heat transfer between the air and water streams per unit of air mass flow rate? So they're asking for small q per uh, mass flow unit rate of air, right? So that Q pertains to our air, okay? Um, what is the ratio of the water mass flow rate to the air mass flow rate? Now, what I went ahead and did, I went ahead and found all of my properties, okay? So I used my state one to refer to my air at the inlet, okay? And my state two to refer to the air at the outlet. I used my state three to refer to the water at the inlet and the state four to refer to the water at the outlet, okay? Now, um, what I went ahead and did for the air was I converted the temperatures into Kelvin, okay? There's not much to that. We didn't have to do anything to the pressures. But for the water, we had to go to our saturation table. So they gave us some keywords, right? They said that we're dealing with a saturated liquid at first. So what do I know? The water is going through boiling, right? Um, so I went ahead and went to my table A5, which is my pressure table for saturated water, and I went to 300 kilopascals, right? Um, now what I found was that at T3, I, it was 133.52 degrees Celsius, right? And I would have had to find my V3, which would have just been my VF at 300 kilopascals, and then my H3, which would have just been my HF at 300 kilopascals. Remember we use those Fs to denote um, what we're dealing with with a saturated liquid, right? Um, what I found is that my T3 and T4 were the same, right? And this is because the water is still going through boiling. And remember, while it's still boiling, the actual temperature doesn't change. However, those other properties do change. So my V4 was just simply my VG at 300 kilopascals, and my H4 was my HG at 300 kilopascals, right? And I, I found this all using the saturated table for the water. I don't have to do that for the air because we're not looking for a, a, a phase changing substance. We don't go to the tables for air, right? Um, so for the first problem, okay, first, let me draw a sketch. So knowing with a heat exchanger, right, they actually gave us a sketch, but you can't see it. So I'm just gonna draw like, sort of like a 2D, sort of simplified version. So they gave us this, basically. And basically the whole concept here is that um, they had water coming in through here. And, okay, leaving through here. And then they had air coming in through there and leaving through here, okay? Now, what we can end up doing, you can also do this, just to signify that, oh, we're only looking at what's going on inside of the heat exchanger, right? Because we're not looking at the outside elements with that. So this is the sketch we end up getting, okay? Um, what we're gonna find is that we also have Q, so they said that air is, an air stream is being used to boil um, a water stream in a steady flow insulated heat exchanger, right? So we know that air is going to be the one to provide the Q dot, right? That air is providing it to the, um, it's providing heat to that water, right? And, um, okay, first of all, let's go ahead and solve that first um, problem. So this was the part, like, um, I had a problem in the exam that asked me for, like, the Q due to the air, right? And I was so confused, I was like, um, what do I, where do I find my Q from? What am I going to use? It's just our CP delta T, okay? And it took me a little bit to realize that. But, um, so our Q, I'm just going to write Q air, right? That's just going to be our CP delta T, right? They asked for the heat transfer between the air and water streams, okay? And, um, we're going to end up having CP delta T, which is simply our CP T1 minus T2, okay? And what we end up getting is, and the reason I guess you do CP1 minus C, CPT1 minus T2 is because that T1 is bigger 
right? So it's, it's gonna give us a positive number. That CP for air is 1.005, T1 is 600, T2 is 400, right? So we get 201, and that's gonna be kilojoules per kilogram. Let me just double check myself. Yes, and you can write kilogram of air if you wanna be more specific, but it's 201 kilojoules per kilogram, okay? Pretty simple. So boom, that's points right there. So we end up getting this, and remember we do a little something when we're focusing with uh, heat exchangers. So we have to look at the air independently and the water independently, okay? To get our, our, our equations that we're gonna use, right? So we're dealing with an open system here, and what we end up getting, right, is just that um, we have, okay, let's look at this, let's look at it from the state of the air, right? So going in, right, we have our m dot one, h dot one, our m, m dot, let me write m dot air, okay? Because m dot one and m dot two are the same. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and write m dot one, but we know that m dot one is equal to m dot two is equal to m dot air, and I'm doing this for a reason. I'm gonna come back to it. m dot three is equal to m dot four is equal to m dot h two o which is our m dot water, okay? And I'm doing that for a reason, I'm gonna come back to that. So we know that m dot one h one is equal to, going out, we have q dot, and I'm not gonna write q dot out, right? You know why I'm doing this because you saw it in the last problem, right? And then we're gonna have plus m dot two h two. Yes, right? Because we're using state two to denote our air leaving, and we're using our state one to denote the air coming in, right? Now let's go ahead and do the same for water. For water, we have m dot um, three h three, and then we also have q coming in this time to the water, right? Plus q dot is equal to m dot four h four. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and solve for q like we do with uh, heat exchangers, and we end up getting m dot. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We, we end up getting m dot four h four. Okay, let me just write it. m dot four h four minus m dot three h three. However, we know that m dot four and m dot three are both equal to m dot h two o, right? So we end up getting m dot h two o um, H4 minus H3, right? Because um, that's equal to our Q, right? And if we solve for Q here, we get M dot one H1 is uh, minus M dot two H2. And then we know that M dot one and M dot two are both equal to M dot air. Right, so we end up getting Q dot is equal to M dot air, uh, H1 minus H2, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and write that here. Q dot is equal to M dot air, H1 minus H2, and Q dot is also equal to M dot H2O, H4 minus H3. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase this because we just solved for that whole thing, right? So I erased this, and what are they asking us for? They're asking us for, what is the ratio of water mass flow rate to the air mass flow rate, right? So, um, hmm. Water mass flow rate to the air mass flow. Okay, so what we can actually go ahead and do is equate these, okay? So we equate these two Qs, right? Because they're the same thing. It, the same heat being lost by the air is the same exact heat being gained by the water because we're not losing any heat to the surroundings because it's adiabatic. And when we say an adiabatic heat exchanger, we don't mean that there's no heat transfer inside of the heat exchanger. We mean outside of the heat exchanger, there's no transfer through those boundaries, okay? 
So, um, so I can go ahead and say m dot air h1 minus h2 is equal to m dot h2o h4 minus h3. And they're asking for the ratio of water mass flow rate to the ratio of air, the water mass flow rate ratio to air mass flow rate. So m dot water over m dot air. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say m dot water over m dot air. I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by m dot air. And that gives me um, m dot H2O over m dot air. And we still have this H4 minus H3, right? H4 minus H3 is equal to H1 minus H2, right? Let me just double check myself. Yes, okay? And then what we can go ahead and do is divide both sides by this. So m dot H2O over m dot air is equal to H1 minus H2 over H4 minus H3. Now, this is the tricky part. You have to remember that state one and state two are to do with air, right? We don't know what H is for air. But we know that H1 minus H2 is just our CP delta T, the change in enthalpy, right? So we can go ahead and say um, CP T1 minus T2 over H4 minus H3 gives us that ratio, right? And what we end up getting is um, CP for air is 1.005 times that T1, which is our 600. And really this is just the difference of those two temperatures, right? So the difference in Celsius is gonna be different to the same, is gonna be equal to the difference in uh, Kelvin, but I'm just doing it in Kelvin. So our H4 is 2724.9 minus 561.43. So once we calculate that out, we should get zero point zero nine two nine one. And there's no unit for that because it's a ratio. And to be honest, I don't know how right this answer is. Me doing it on the board right here, I believe it's correct. But I actually got this answer wrong in the exam. So, yeah, I, uh, I made a silly mistake. But this is how you do it, okay? And we're not completely done. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this because this is just the calculation just to show you how we've gotten our final answer right here, right? But we're not done. We still have a sketch that we need to um, draw out, okay? So I'm just gonna leave that sketch of the actual heat exchanger there, and I'm gonna leave my properties up there. But um, let's say we wanna draw a PV diagram, okay? My PV diagram, and now the good part about this is I can choose which one to do. So I'm just gonna do the PV diagram of the water this time, okay? So I know that there's gonna be a little dome, right? Um, now I know that my water starts off as a saturated liquid, right? So it's gonna be somewhere there, right? I know that my water's gonna move until it reaches the saturated vapor state, right? And it's gonna end right there. Now, I'm gonna label this as one, no. Well, you can label this as three and four, since we use those to determine um, state three and four, but I'm sure they wouldn't fault you too much if you also label this as one and two because it's the first state of the water and the second state of the water. I don't think they would give you too much um, trouble about that. We just have to remember that with a PV diagram, right? We end up, um, you can draw this. I don't know how strict they would be on you for this. We have our little arrow here. You can end up just doing this, right? I'm just gonna move my four here, right? But that's not to imply that, that, that we're starting here or ending here or anything. We start here right, with this process, and we end there. Why? Because we go from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor, okay? It makes sense. And then again, they might ask you for your conditions or assumptions. 
Um, no heat flow across the boundary of the heat exchanger. Um, adiabatic heat exchanger, that's our assumption, right? No kinetic energy, potential energy, because it's stationary, right? Um, no work done, right? Let me see what else I wrote. Um, you can write ideal gas. I wrote air molecules don't interact. Um, steady state. Um, yeah. And then physical laws. We used the first law for an open system. We used... Um, you can probably write ideal gas. They're probably not going to fault you for it, but I don't know if they'd give you any points since we didn't really do any, any ideal gas um, formula except for you can write the Q is equal to CP delta T. You can definitely go ahead and write that. I'm sure they'll give you credit. Um, let me see what else I wrote. Yeah, that's it. So really, that's what you have to know. Um, I don't think I talked about what our system would be, but just know that your system is going to be the heat exchanger containing both water and air because the heat exchanger contains both of those fluids inside of it. And that's really all there is to it. Um, you just have to break down the problem and sort of look at it um, analytically and say, what do I know? What do I not know? What are they asking me for? If you didn't understand anything, please go ahead and leave um, comments in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I'll be doing more videos. Thank you.